hello and welcome to what we hope will be another exciting edition of Chinny Vision. This time, we take to the skies. What was the transport of choice in the 1980s? Well, some people would say fancy cars, but I'd say the helicopter. We had shows like Airwolf, but more importantly in the UK, we also had game shows such as Treasure Hunt, where Annika Rice flew around a course finding clues in a jet ranger helicopter ably assisted by contestants back in the studio in london but also one of the best tv shows of all time the fantastic interceptor and a forgotten classic completely brilliant with sean o'kane playing the interceptor flying around the countryside like a deranged lunatic zapping people from his augusta 109 fantastic television And of course you wanted to replicate this on your home computer. And the first game that really let you experience a proper helicopter simulator, I guess, was Tomahawk by Digital Integration. And before you started the game, you'd have to contend with Lenslock. Yes, the horrible copy protection system that any serious hacker could defeat and hack out of the game in a short amount of time, but inconvenienced everybody else trying to place the blessed lens on the screen squint at it and then get the code wrong we're starting off on the spectrum this game's by digital integration and the helicopter in question this game's modeled on is the apache by mcconnell douglas so several parameters you start off with and you start the game you can select your cloud base how much crosswinds there are if it's day or night and there's four missions starting from a very simple mission through to full-on combat you're always in a combat zone but it it depends on the difficulty we'll look at these missions later also different pilot ratings and you can set your controls as well so here we are and some of the control panel there will look slightly familiar to players of fighter pilot which is by the same programmer dk marshall Um, this came out a year later i believe so we start the engine and then we start to raise the collective the rpm is up at full don't raise the collective too high because it will start beeping at you because it's bad if you do that if you're not aware how a helicopter works in real life you've got two sticks and the rotation of the blades doesn't affect the speed but it does affect the speed but you've got this thing called collective which basically means you can go up and down press pause there um and you tip the helicopter forward to go faster pull it back to slow down again so you've compared to flying a plane it's a little bit more complicated once you get your head around the fact you've got separate controls for height and you've got to tip forward to go faster or back to go slower you begin to get the idea the physics are fairly as far as the spectrum can get fairly accurate you can even do things like auto rotate which is where you drop the helicopter through the air without rpm on the engine and this is complicated to explain and the dropping of the helicopter will rotate the blades and slow you down Uh, you have to learn auto rotation if you're flying a helicopter in case the engine packs up it means you can land in a controlled manner sound effects 48k beeper noises and here we go got a target and then we're flying through the trees gonna miss the trees and you've got three weapons you've got a machine gun a heat seeking missile or guided missile and a non-guided dumb missile but we've got a gun emplacement there we can see we're heading towards it I've got the cannon on there and just trying to 4,000 meters to go firing some of my dumb missiles at it to try and hit it you press the end key it shows you where your next target is you can see the helicopter on the right hand side of the screen at the bottom shows you where the target is in relation to you i've got him there and up we go again it's climbing watching the speed mustn't go above 200 miles an hour uh, i don't know if that's nautical miles an hour or traditional miles an hour i'm not sure on there but if you go above 200 you're going too fast and the helicopter will eventually career out of control so over to the amstrad cpc and we're flying over some trees there and the big thing i noticed about the cpc version is the color it's running in mode naught and if i haven't explained what and with the game you've got a battle going on in the area you're flying around in and you've got enemy uh, tanks and gun emplacements which are red and friendly ones which are blue so i've blown up an enemy tank there and I've, it's easy to spot on the cpc because you've got the colors 
here on the C64, you might be expecting to get some colours, but no, everything's black and green or blue in the main area there. That's an enemy tank there, which I just hit. And unlike the CPC, that's just black. Although you do get the targeting in the correct colour in the control status there. And you get told why you crashed as well. Having a quick look at the Atari 8-bit version. Similar to the C64, a bit slower. And again, lacks colour in the main play area. But you do get the targeting down the bottom. I do like that high-resolution display down the bottom with lots of colours on it on the Atari. Back to the CPC, and that's the map there. And we're playing one of the scenarios now. So we've got a war going on. The blue is our side. The red area of the map is the enemy. And what you've got to do is try and tip the war in your favour by destroying a lot, or as much as the money of the enemy as you can. I've taken on some damage there. You can see in the bottom right-hand corner, my helicopter is going pretty red. Too much more damage, because the enemy will shoot at you, and I'll be falling up the sky pretty fast. There is an enemy helicopter flying around the area as well. You can see I've got it targeted there, or it did have. And you can see a dot in the horizon there, and there's 9,000 metres away. Or 9,000 feet, I'm not sure. Is this metres or feet? Don't know. So he's, he's I'm targeting him there. And he's shooting at me. I'm trying to use the cannon because I want to get him up close so you can see the vector graphics involved in the enemy helicopter i've shot him well okay well you didn't get to see him but when we do see him eventually you'll see um that like the enemy tanks and the enemy gun emplacements these made up of vector graphics and the helicopter will home in on you it's not apparent when you're flying around but the tanks and gun emplacements on the ground are moving so they are moving around slowly there is a war going on beneath you as those white things in the distance are, well, they're laughingly called mountains. They look like giant tents, even when you get close up to them. And there is a landing pad there. Now, we're in friendly territory, so if I land on the H, in the la on the landing pad, I will be refuelled and my helicopter repaired. So, just trying to get my helicopter down here, just in the right position. I land it smoothly. Your undercarriage just automatically comes down. You don't have to worry about that. Twelve meters or feet. Yeah, I don't know if there's meters or feet. Ten meters. We're completely static at zero miles an hour. Coming down, not quite the centre. If I stop the engine now, I should hopefully be all refueled and repaired, and all my uh, missiles will be restocked as well. Slowing down the engine. There is a fuel gauge hidden down there in the bottom, and in extra that digital integration logo there. Right, so hopefully any second, just as the rotor blades come to a stop, I will be refueled. Here we go, and there we go. Right, so I'm refueled. There's another enemy helicopter heading towards me, and we need to take off. So power up the engine, and then pull the collective forward or back. I don't know if it's forward or backwards, apply the collective, and we will take off. And up we go. I do like the fact they've chosen mode naught here on the Amstrad. You'd think it'd look a bit more blocky because of that, but actually it works really well. You can see things like the trees are dark green over there. You can see the tanks. You can see the buildings, which are purple. Um, it's all vector graphics, but I just like I really like the way the CPC version looks. The Spectrum version is the fastest. The CPC version is the second fastest. And then the C64 followed by the XC. C64 version is significantly slower. So, right, there's an enemy tank over there. He's over a thousand meters away, but we can move towards him, tip down the nose, and we will go forward. And you do need to work that collective control. You can't just fly this thing like an aeroplane. And also, on the Atari and C64 versions, you can run it with two joysticks. Here on the CPC, I've got my left hand on the keyboard, 
operating the th the collective and the throttle and the right hand on the joystick on the XC and the C64 you can use both joysticks and fly it like a real helicopter there's the enemy helicopter there he's, he's got he's quite close in now so let's see if we can get him close this time in he comes where we go oh, oh oh dear we've crashed into each other like the air crash investigators are going to have some fun with that. Back to the specky. And as you can see, yeah, it, it is faster. This is the fastest version. That window, I think it's that window. That window is slightly smaller than the Amstrad version. But it, it, as soon as you come out to the specky, you do realise, and this is a different combat scenario, by the way, you see a different kind of war is going on. Uh, there's some area, the, the war zone below is moving around in a different way. Um, you can see the blues have made progress into some areas and the reds haven't. And that's a really big playing field you're flying around in. It takes quite a while to fly from one side of the map to the other. Here we are on the C-64 and here comes the enemy helicopter. Incidentally, I've once measured how fast the enemy helicopter goes, and it ain't very fast. It's about 20, 30 miles an hour, so you can easily outrun him, although the computer cheats a little bit. And Oh, oh, oh! Well, we didn't fly into him. C64 version is quite slow, though. So as you come across from the specky version, it's about approximately half the frame rate, I guess. Here he comes again. I'm going to use my heat-seeking missile this time. There we go. I like work of it. And for comparison, here we are on the XC. Slightly slower again. And here comes the enemy helicopter. Oh, I missed it. How could I miss him with that? Oh, oh. Game's crashed. I can still fire my missiles, but the game has definitely hung. At least that lets you see a bit of the enemy helicopter there. This is night flying, so you've got night vision. Makes the game harder. And this is on the specky, so everything is red. Although it's going to make hard, things harder on the CPC, because actually on the CPC we have more colours. It's uh, harder to fly with just red, whereas on the specky everything's either black usually anyway. So it makes no odds. It's, just, it's like finding a slightly different colour scheme, except we don't get the horizon. Flying at night encourages you to use your instruments more. There you go, the war's going on beneath us there, and you see trees, and over the CPC, and yeah, it's all red at night, and there's an enemy building down there. Again, you've got to use your instruments. The thing about the CPC, of course, it's mode naught, so the control panel down the bottom is at lower resolution. Oh, am I going too close to that building? I'm going too close to that building. And this is what the cloud looks like here on the spectrum. And it just looks like a grey sky, but if you go above a certain level, which I think is set to 500 metres at the moment, you will lose sight of everything. All you will see is grey. And then you really are instrument fly flying, because you can see nothing at all. We get down there. Come on, can I get this? Can I, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I, I, the best thing about this game is the low-level flying. There are also versions of Tomahawk for the PC and the Amstrad PCW. And the PC version looks really ugly, but it's faster. Um, you get all that pro benefit of the faster processor in that computer plus you've got a really fast computer comparatively and the Amstrad PCW version is a master stroke in converting a I think it was the first vector game ported to the PCW um, but no real speed increase effectively it's the CPC and Spectrum version just running in a green screen uh, mono computer Tomahawk's been a real joy to review although this video is about 20 minutes long I've played the, certainly the Spectrum and the Amstrad version about an hour each and I just lost complete track 
of the time I was enjoying myself so much. You look at the game and think it would be enormously limited, but it's absolutely brilliant. The Spectrum version is the fastest and most fluid, but I really enjoy the CPC version because of colour, because you can visually pick out without your instruments what's friend and what's foe just by looking at the main display without going out the instruments or anything else. And it makes it enormous fun to see these different tanks lining up these different gun emplacements, zooming along the landscape, popping up behind trees, zapping the enemy. CPC version isn't a little bit slower, but it's one of those things where you've got an enormous benefit from having that extra colour. C64 version, well, you'd hoped it would have had the colour of the CPC version. But in actual fact, that main display is pretty much the same way the Spectrum runs, except without the speed and fluidity. A bit of a shame, and the same of the Atari version. Yes, it's a good game, but it lacks that fluidity. It isn't as fast. In fact, it's slightly sluggish. And despite that lovely control panel down the bottom of the Atari version, the main gameplay area is effectively mono. And it, again, you can't see the difference between the enemy and the friendly forces without using your instruments. Despite the fact it's a simulator, it's incredibly easy to pick up and play. A lot of these games are daunting. Fighter Bomber and some other later simulator games can be a bit too much for the kind of 8-bit casual gameplay people seem to want today. As long as you get your head around the way helicopters fly, it's dead simple and the controls are the same between all the versions. That's also lovely. I can't believe how much this game on the CPC and Specky sucked me in was an absolute time sink when I really should have been getting on reviewing this game but every second I spent flying around this virtual environment was a complete joy. I really can't recommend Tomahawk enough to Specky and CPC users.